just Turkish. It's in Turkish? Yes. That's fine. It's good. Birine her çek söyleyeyim Dinlemezsen neyleyeyim Birine her çek söyleyeyim Good morning or whatever time of day it is for you right now in this moment Thank you for taking the time to join me on a guided meditation. Each morning when I awake, I notice um, as the mind becomes aware and the sleeping, restful state of deep sleep, of rest, of that peaceful slumber. The mind does not have access to all the external stimuli that is providing its mechanisms for gaining your attention. By attention, you are at your core, awareness. If you look past your thoughts, the ideas, the beliefs, the concepts, all of the clutter of the mind, those things that were told to you over and over again, reinforced through family and education and society, the local environment. When you're focused on the local environment, there is a need to promote the personality, identity, the constructed ego. By constructed, the ego in its current state is a construct of beliefs, thoughts and ideas and feelings that are then constructed into a identity, identify with being a man or being a human or being in a certain place in time, perhaps being in a, from a country or an organization or an institution. Those things are things that you are identifying with on a temporary basis. Temporary meaning that birth and death are already prescribed, they're already determined within this experience. It's part of the, the rule or the foundation of where we're at. So considering that the identity or the personality or some thought, idea, or feeling you have about yourself is permanent is a self-lie. You'd be lying to yourself. And not lying in a, what people describe as a, um, a manner of getting something or not getting something. Most of the times when people are involved in what they call deception or lies is because they are attempting to get something. They're uh, either attempting to avoid punishment, perceived punishment, or they're attempting to get a reward through deceptive or dishonest practices. We've all done it. Monkeys steal bananas. When you realize that the body that you're existing in and the life you're experiencing are not you, that you are not the primate or the hominid or the human or the monkey or any of those things. But when you operate through a level of identification with this temporary experience, if you promote your personality on social media and throughout your work environment and your family environment, if you simply seek the supply of attention or tasty food or substances, validating your authority or 
the constant need to surround yourself with individuals who support your illusionary belief system, then you are living through identity and personality. Inside of those, you suffer because these are temporary involvements. More importantly, when the mind, the temporary mind, which is a generational evolutionary construct that you inherited from the primates that you ascended from, that brain tissue will try and convince you of all kinds of illusionary games that you're the boss or the mother or the father, that you are an authority, that you have some level of perceived intelligence that somehow your position in your family, society, or lack thereof, defines who you are. And if you believe in that illusion, like a child believing that Santa Claus is very real and all of the behaviors have to be constructed around the idea that Santa Claus provides rewards and punishment, then you will operate through society, through your days, around all the people that you're with. You'll operate through a series of fears and desires. That means you want something. Perhaps you just want to eat the right foods or live in the right environment or be recognized for your temporary body or personality. You can look inside of yourself. You have wanted things. Maybe it's just to grow up. Maybe it's just to get away from a certain situation or to achieve a perceived goal or gain. And then you enter into the illusion of this life's experience and start operating like a avatar or, an, or a illusionary extension of your truth. If you have the capacity to stop your primate ego functionism, functionism, functioning, the sensations of the body, using those as a measure for how you want to feel or Think about something. And then placing your life and around the idea of appearances. These will cause great emotional suffering and even perhaps the loss of the quality of your life's experience. Those individuals who have moved past just identifying with the ego or the personality will actually allow the mind to engage them to operate out of addictive behaviors, eating lots of food, pursuing other individuals for sexual gratification, pursuing other individuals for validation or to assist in manipulation, using your family or your work environment to be intolerant or bully others or exact some level of retribution or um, justice that you perceive others should experience. This is a very, very shallow existence. Your life is temporary. No matter how big you become as king or how far you fall down into the insignificance of this life's experience, you will suffer attempting to promote the identity and personality and maintain appearances. This is childlike and people do it at every level. I see adults in every form of the society at high levels with so-called positions. These are not real. 
Knowledge is not real. That body that you are experiencing life in is temporary. The most beautiful part of that truth is that what you are, which is conscious awareness, which is life itself, which is the extension of creation, which is the unfolding of discovery. That is the truth of your experience. And these have no end, no beginning or end. They've never experienced death. There's no such thing. When you are clearly shown or witness the truth, the facts, the reality of existence, then you recognize the temporary aspects of this life. And you recognize that everyone is working very, very hard for their own personal supply, money, attention, validation, confirmation, a desperate need to prove and disprove the illusion of this experience. What gets missed through that constant drive for a paycheck or attention is the valuable essence of life itself. You have been extended life through creation from what you call a God or the powerful entity of life itself. There is no way to confirm that there is nothing because everything is happening in reality. There is no way to confirm what is phenomenal, which is your origins, the origins of your thoughts, the unfolding of your life's destiny or experience or fate or whatever you want to call it. You have no control. An acceptance and embracing of that is true humility, which is true love first for yourself and then for this world. So I'm going to do a short meditation. I like to start each day and balancing into that state of awareness. As I enter the day, that peaceful awareness, that state enters into all of my activities. As life ebbs and flows and rushes or calms past me, I can remain in the peaceful state of awareness and truth without desire, without fear, without the need to promote a falsehood about myself or maintain some level of appearance, which can be very, very um, uncomfortable. So let's begin. Try and find a quiet, peaceful place to sit we can rest for 15 or 20 minutes. Focus on your breathing to start with. That's what all meditations and yogas, this is what they all do. The feeling of the breath flowing in through your lungs and flowing out is the feeling of life, the experience of life. Once you begin breathing and you get into the natural rhythm of your breath, move into peace. Peace means allowing your thoughts and sensations, allow them to pass. Set those aside for 15 to 20 minutes to allow yourself to remain in a peaceful state of awareness. Recognize yourself as the sky and as thoughts and feelings and those things are clouds, let them pass, do not give them attention. If you give a thought attention, you're actually giving it power. And the real power you have is to not attend to those thoughts. Those have been constructed inside of you. I usually take in 
three breaths at the top and push out three breaths at the bottom to fill my lungs and then release the tension so I can place myself into a natural rhythmic state of breathing. The same rhythm of the planet going around the sun, the same rhythm of the, the planet spinning each day, the same rhythm of seasons, the same rhythm of sleep, the same rhythm of life itself. Breathe into that natural rhythm of life and relax yourself into a meditative state. Let's begin. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Allow all thoughts to fade. Like clouds, they will pass. Set these ideas, these distractions, set them aside while you meditate into peaceful awareness. They will be there for you if you choose to attend to them at another time. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
The only reality you have ever known is awareness. The only truth you have ever known or can confirm is direct experience. Anything that was told to you, anything you read or saw, is a temporary illusion, an idea, an hypothesis, a theory. These are not real. Look now to your eternal sense of awareness. Remain in your present state of awareness. Move past the mind. Move past the temporary thoughts. Move past your conditions of ignorance. And discover peace. If you are seeking knowledge, confirmation, or ideas about yourself by searching the environment, engaging with other life forces, seeking and seeking, you are living in a complete illusion, distracted by the temporary fantasy and tapestry of this life's experience. Imagining you're an ant climbing an anthill or a monkey collecting bananas. Imagining your knowledge which creates limitations is somehow to your advantage. You imagine your authority or position in society or perceived cleverness or ability to navigate social situations is a power. This is the core of your weakness. Your awareness, your life itself, you are an extension of creation. What knowledge could assist you in eternity?
you have been extended the privilege of life. Wanting and not wanting is ignorance, immaturity is primate in its origin. Acceptance, truth, humility are the core of your authentic powers, the foundation of confidence. Remain in your breathing. Remain in awareness. Remain in peace. peaceful awareness, you can recognize that life has always unfolded as it must, not as the human wants it to. That would be a limitation. The ideas, thoughts, concepts, and beliefs that you have about yourself and this place are serious limitations. Limitations to the power of eternal existence. Limitations to the power of truth limitations to love, contentment, and peace. When you let go, accept, realize the shallowness of appearances, you begin to discover freedom, a peace, a truth. First, a comfort with yourself then love for yourself. No one can love you more than you. Look past your mind. Look to awareness. Look to the moment and recognize this truth. You are an extension of creation.
Only you have the ability to recognize the construction of your anxiety. Only you have the ability to free yourself from the suffering of tension, of stress, of perceived responsibilities, accountabilities, roles. This is not you. This is what others want. You can always look to awareness, discover your peace, and place your footprints in your truth. Treat yourself with respect and dignity. You will discover authenticity. You will discover truth. Truth in awareness. Truth in the essence of eternity. Truth in the privilege of life. Truth in humility. Truth in acceptance. Truth in love. What you are is creation. There is no superior or inferior. There is no more or less. There is no place to get to of the unfathomable, unknowable, phenomenal experience of life itself. The origins are beyond your understanding or capacity. When you recognize this truth, you recognize awareness as your essence, as what you are. as everything you have ever confirmed. This profound realization provides immense peace, confidence, and truth. You will recognize that you are in the middle of eternity and that fear, especially of separation, of death, of appearances is immature. It's ignorance. And it's the source of your suffering. The source of your demands. The source of your shallowness. It is the source of your weakness. Look past the mind, look past these thoughts, ideas, look past the distracting construct of your local environment, and you will find awareness. In awareness, you will discover your truth. Through truth, 
you will find authenticity. When you express authenticity, you express confidence. Love yourself deeply and you will attract the same. Treat yourself with dignity and respect and you will extend that to the world around you. Recognize that feelings and emotions, fears and desires are your weakness. These are the core of the prison that you are holding the keys to. Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, 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 Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Um. Satomaya Tamasoma Jyoti. 